Welcome to DeFi, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. This week, we sat down with leading crypto security company, Ledger. Thanks a lot for coming on today, guys. We have Adrian and Fabrice from Ledger, the, the one and only Ledger. Be really interesting to hear just, yeah, what you guys do at Ledger, but also, you know, how you got started there and what's your kind of background. Fabrice, do you want to take the lead? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so I joined Ledger, um, I would say, more than three years ago, maybe three years and a half ago. Um, uh, my background is uh, I'm, a, I'm a very old ex-software uh, developer. Uh, then I worked in the technical account management, uh, mostly for uh, tech companies. And in 2018, I joined Ledger because I was really passionate about crypto. That's really the, the way I entered the space, uh, mostly through the, the technical angle. Uh, and yeah, there was an offer. Uh, I, I just applied and I, I started as a as a product manager at Ledger uh, working on the nano application. So all the small applications that you install on your Hello wallet. And from there, uh, I evolved and now I'm uh, responsible for uh, the entire developer ecosystem that we are trying to to build and, and engage with. Uh, and so through this scope, I'm really uh, discussing with a lot of teams uh, in the crypto industry, which is super exciting. Uh, and that's mainly it for me. Uh, Adrien is part of my team, so I will let him uh, introduce himself. But uh, very pleased to be here today with you guys. Great, thank you. Yeah, very pleased as well. Uh, I joined Ledger recently, uh, less than six months ago, and uh, I I come because I I love crypto. I've been in crypto for uh, a bit more than four years now, and uh, and before that I was working in IT for capital markets. So I have a I have a pretty good understanding of how capital markets are working, and I'm sure you guys at Stackdown as well do, and um, and I know what's wrong with it. So I'm trying to help fixing it with the uh, Mainly Bitcoin and also DeFi. Incredible. What were you What were you doing in crypto before you joined Ledger? Well, I, it was just on on personal time. I was, uh, mm. you know, running nodes, uh, trying stuff, uh, and uh, trying to understand what is this revolution is about. You know, because mm -hmm. uh, I think you you don't get to see this big of a revolution in terms of technology and and economics. Uh, mm. a more than once in your lifetime so uh, really need to to understand it deeply so what what was it like that you what were you doing in capital markets and like what attracted you to ledger of all places so in cup market what i was doing is is i was putting the it systems that support uh, trading so mm. uh, i was uh, yeah all the trading desk um, i mainly work for a uh, uh, a bank in Sweden, in, in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. So basically all their trading floors, uh, all the trades and all the post-trade and all the risk and all the p &L reports, all that was produced by a software I was uh, I, I was working on. Um, and well, Ledger is, uh, as, as you may know, is it, it's, it's the one and only uh, nano manufacturer. Mm -hmm. It's a French company. There are not a lot of uh, French company in crypto that are as big as Ledger. And um, yeah, I think it's um, uh, getting sovereign uh, over your fund, uh, mm -hmm. getting uh, getting to be your own bank and becoming bankless from uh, a TradeFi perspective was really what uh, attracted me. And I, I'm not a developer, uh, so I, I got to find a way to be in a very tech-savvy environment without being a developer. And that's why mm -hmm. Fabrice was a perfect fit. The Fabris team was a perfect uh, mm -hmm. fit because I get to be a, a, a project manager, product manager, uh, this type of roles, which um, requires to understand the tech, but the, yeah, I'm not I'm not doing any dev uh, on a daily mm -hmm. basis. So that that's the, the, that was, uh, that's what's great about the opportunity to work with Fabris team and working, I'm, I, I mainly work with partners so I work with StakeDAO, but I work with uh, a lot of different uh, protocols, firms, mm -hmm. teams all over the world who wants to build on top of our stack, uh, which is which is recent. But uh, you know, we have aimed to really grow this ecosystem, and and we are trying to make uh, projects and teams who want to you know be as frictionless as possible with mm -hmm. the, the whole ledger stack, whether it's your nano, but it's also ledger live, 
and um, yeah, that's what uh, we are trying to achieve with Fabrice and the team. Yeah, and and so just on that, you know, Fabrice, you know, you've been okay. You said I think you've been with Ledger for three years, was it? For almost four years, I guess. So, like, how do you when people, you know, if you're at a a dinner party and you're meeting someone, you know, um, and they ask what you're working on, how do you how do you introduce Ledger? So thanks for that question. Um, and the answer has changed a lot. It has evolved a lot uh, since uh, since I joined. When I joined, we were like 70 people or 75. Uh, and we were known as a hardware wallet manufacturer. And crypto was this kind of, you know, shady thing that people didn't really want to touch. It's not uh, shady anymore? Oh, I, <laughs> I, I, I will not uh, dare say anything about this. But, um, but now at least people are not saying it's a bubble anymore. That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and or if they are saying it, it looks like they are a, a bit, uh, you know, OK Boomer style. Uh, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's really not trendy to say it anymore. Um, and and I can explain what crypto is. People kind of have a, a very small but uh, existing understanding on, of what it is. Ledger is also way bigger uh, than what it was in, in 2018. So people, How many staff do you have now out of interest? Uh, around 500, I would say. And, and we, wow. we will probably be around 1,000 end of year. Um, so yeah, it, it really, the acceleration was pretty, pretty substantial. Um, so all, yeah, in, now, all in France? No, no, no. We have uh, different offices around the world. Uh, mm-hmm. We have offices in New York, uh, in Singapore. I think we have one in London. Yes, several places and location in in uh, in France. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, it's it's really uh, now it's, it's it's a global company. The headquarters is in is in Paris uh, still. Most of the engineering and product resources are in Paris, but really the goal is to is, is to work uh, you know a- anywhere around the world. When I explain what Ledger is, I, I always um, go back to the to the basics, uh, mm. and the basic is it's a security company. That's what we do. Okay, uh, it just happened that people understand way more security when it comes uh, from the crypto uh, mm. topics because security is paramount. Um, if you lose your keys, you lose a lot of value potentially. So people get it. Okay, if you lose your your password to access your, mm. I don't know, sort of online supermarket, it's not really a big deal. If you lose your password to access your crypto, then, mm-hmm. then you're really screwed. Uh, so people can get that uh, fairly easily. And presenting Ledger as a security company is probably the the, the best entry point uh, into the conversation, I would say. Mm. So we were founded in 2014, um, became wow. quite successful in 2018, I would say. That's the the, the first uh, 20K uh, threshold for Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and from there, uh, it was really, really great. It was a great experience. Uh, of course, there was a bear, bear market uh, after 2018. Um, but even then, we were we built a lot. Uh, we increased our portfolio. We're not just a you know a security company building hardware wallet anymore. Like Adrian was saying, we we extended uh, our product offering to software application to services, uh, and and we extended our um, I would say our reach to 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 all the protocols and teams out there. So we mm-hmm. support many blockchains. We support many protocols, uh, and it's uh, it's been quite a journey. But uh, I, I will I will I think there is still a we still have a few more years uh, struggling to explain what Ledger does. Mm. Um, but I hope that in a couple of years, like everyone will really, you, you'll just get it. Uh, the, the young people, especially, are actually quite familiar with the Hubble wallet, the onboarding process, the 24 mm-hmm. words. All of this is not super strange to them. Uh, it, it's a bit stranger to, I would say, to, to older folks. Certainly, yeah. It's, it's still a topic of um, intrigue for a lot of people, I think. 2014 i mean that is a long time ago like what what was ledger doing in those first four years that you mentioned before it really kind of took off it's a, it's a good uh, good question so if you go back to the to the genesis block of ledger uh, it was uh, it was founded by a, a team of entrepreneurs and cryptography experts okay they 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 were all coming from you know different companies. Actually, it's a, it's it's the merge of three companies uh, that that made Ledger uh, that gave uh, Ledger birth. Um, one of the company was really uh, working on you know uh, educating and and giving Bitcoin to the masses. Uh, another company was shipping bitcoin to people like really delivering bitcoin by mail mm-hmm. and uh, and the last one was a was a tech company uh, working on the on the smart card uh, 
topic and and security of the of smart card everything you can build on smart card so mm-hmm. smart card just to give you a, a quick understanding is you know the chip that you have on on your credit card uh, that's it basically so that's the, the proven technology that you that people are using every day without even you know knowing this mm-hmm. uh, and and what um, what Nicolas Bacca at the time uh, was working on was a way for to run software on this. So not just to store secret, but also mm-hmm. to execute code on this. And so these people, uh, they just joined together and they were all passionate about uh, either cryptography or security or, or crypto. Mm-hmm. And, and all of them combined, um, they decided that, okay, there is a use case. There is a very important use case to basically store your secrets, store your seed, store your private keys in a very secure environment um, to get access to crypto. That's the okay. that's the crypto relation because people get it uh, in a way that people can actually you know manage it still. It should be both safe and useful. Um, and, and they created the first um, uh, hardware wallet uh, from Ledger. I think it was called the HW, like hardware wallet, uh, mm-hmm. no screen, uh, just storing your 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 seed, and uh, you you had to interact with it with uh, through command line first, and then through mini applications, and from there it evolved a lot. Uh, and I think the first uh, big big jump uh, was probably around 2016 or 17, and that's when people really realized, okay, that's an easy way to store my my keys because. Mm-hmm paper wallets and, and all of these all the other alternatives, they work, but they are not super user-friendly. They are kind of uh, dangerous to use. If you lose it, you lose everything. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's how it started. And from there, it evolved a lot. Uh, we we launched the Nano S. I, I cannot tell you exactly the, the date when it was launched. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, but the Nano S was the was really the, the most successful product Ledger launched. Uh, mm. we, we sold today probably more than three million and a half of them, something like this. Uh, and so it's really the the, the most the most used out of wallet uh, there is out there uh, today. Uh, and so that's what made Ledger successful uh, at the time. And now we're just, I would say, trying to to extend this uh, this mm. legacy uh, to to other type of products and to and, and build other offers to 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 bring crypto to mainstream basically right and and so am i correct in saying that you know you guys were kind of the first to market um as a hardware wallet i i i don't know if we were the first we were probably one of the first but mm-hmm. we were not the only ones uh i, I would think that for instance trezor were there uh, early as well uh, i okay. am not entirely sure about the dates, so so some, someone should check this uh, online but uh, we we're probably one of the first, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's what, what's clear today, at least, is that we are the most secure. Uh, and and this idea of security um, is also what made us successful. Um, mm. You know, uh, uh, right now, people are not talking too much about security uh, nowadays, okay? They talk about NFTs, they talk about a lot of things. But a security topic was super mm-hmm. important for the for the hardcore crypto uh, crypto guys from the past. They, they understood really deeply right. what it meant. Uh, and so this security topic was super important. Um, mm-hmm. And at the time, we were we were already the most secure hardware wallet. And that's how, you know, they, they just, it was a, People discussing with each other, just sharing the news and telling each other, okay, you should buy a hardware wallet from Ledger because mm. it's it's safe and you can you can sleep well if you if you just own one. And that's the way basically we made our, our first uh, advertisements. Okay, people talking to each other, uh, and we ended up selling a lot of them at events and stuff like that mm-hmm. without really communicating a lot about this. So the the I would say the marketing and the adver- advertisement uh, around the hardware wallet came very late. And by then, Ledger was already positioned as as probably the most successful mm. hardware wallet in the crypto industry. I mean, do you have up-to-date figures on how many, you know, how many users or, or customers you have? Like I'm assuming, what, three, four million? So uh, I we uh, I don't know how many users uh, mm. you can you can buy several hardware wallets if you want. Right, uh, right. You're still only one user. Uh, we also do not know uh, exactly what people do with the with their hardware wallet. Uh, mm-hmm. If you if you use your hardware wallet uh, with a uh, I don't know with Electrum with Ethereum wallet with MetaMask with all the other services that Ledger cannot have any information on, well, we don't know what you do with it. Um, mm. And um, today, what we know, though, is how many other wallets we, we sold. Uh, I right. think, Adrian, correct me if I'm wrong, but we are above 4 million today. Uh, mm. yep. And so, so, yeah. 
and, and selling in more than 200 countries. So really, it's, uh, it's selling globally. Uh, I think the biggest market is still the US, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, Europe and, and Asia are big markets as well. Uh, so really shipping in, in any parts of the world. So like, I guess I have um, something of a, a philosophical question about where do you see Ledger's product development in terms of like in the adoption cycle? Like assuming that a lot of these wallets you've sold so far have been to um, like the people you referenced before, you know, early adopters, people who care and know about security, who, you know, don't want to use a, a a hot wallet or a mobile wallet or as a company what are you thinking about in terms of like where we are and what that means for ledger in terms of like who are going to be using these wallets in the future i'd say um obviously right now your the first reaction of someone getting into crypto is probably not to buy a hardware wallet first. That's uh, that may have been the the case in the past, and and even in the past, I'm not so sure. Now, uh, what we do know is, or what we do think is that people, after a while, once they have enough value, and once they understand the basic risk of crypto, then ensuring uh, their security is something that that quickly they they understand. Uh, Look at what happened, uh, you know, recently in Canada, uh, with people saying you should remove your funds from exchanges. Um, right. People are reading this on Twitter. Uh, some of the people they already know what it's about. Uh, they understand mm -hmm. this concept. Some other people are like, why? And they read threads, and then they learn mm -hmm. and they understand everything. So I think crypto for any every user is a journey, um, and and they have to go through this journey to understand exactly the value of, of, of being sovereign, uh, of owning your assets and of security. That's usually the point when where they, they reach uh, Ledger. Um, but of course, that's not our ambition. Uh, our ambition is to be there, you know, at first, uh, like your first entry point into crypto. Right. Um, so, so there is a lot of, um, of, of, uh, of thinking at Ledger at the moment to really try to, to turn things around uh, mm -hmm. and make people go with Ledger from day one. Um, mm. it's, it's not easy because we are a security company. Uh, right. That's our core expertise. We're not... We're not an exchange. Uh, we are not a financial service, um, and so what we offer is a hardware wallet. So the go the goal for us is really to to make people maybe go first through the hardware wallet to get their mm -hmm. first crypto. So that's one thing right now with the product we have, and of course there are a lot of you know reflection about what the next products will be in the in the future. Uh, and at some point, uh, if crypto becomes mainstream. I'm not exactly sure it will take the, the the form and shape of a you know of a USB pen drive. That, that's probably not what it will look like. Mm -hmm. And so, if you project yourself, maybe I don't know, maybe five years from now or ten years from now, I don't have any any accurate uh, estimation of the timeline. But right, we should all at the end of the day pay by phone probably. Uh, now the question is, how do you bring security inside uh, a mobile phone, for instance? Mm -hmm. Today, mobile mobile phones are not secure. Uh, so this is maybe an angle to to, to look at, uh, to just mm. try to see how you can onboard the next billion people in crypto while still ensuring security day one. But I, I don't know, Adrian, if you have any uh, other things to add on, on the topic, maybe you have uh, uh, other ideas. No, no, I mean, 100% uh, on, on what you are saying and uh, definitely the, the, you know, the usage. I mean, uh, the, the nanos are... Our, our beautiful piece of security but i mean in terms of you know you you need to i mean the nano experience is an experience that only the nano offers right clicking on buttons to review amounts on a very small screen with i mean this is um this is what's uh, you know we we live with material i mean technical constraints right we cannot uh, it's hard to build hardware wallets uh, mm. it's 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 not a simple business uh, securing uh, devices is is hard. Uh, you know, if if it was easy, the phones would be secured. They are not. Uh, zero phone today are secured. Um, so this is this is what are these are the challenges we are facing. And uh, and definitely when you know we sold the f four plus million, but if you want to reach uh, pretty much everyone on earth, you you need to change the experience, right? So this is this is what uh, this is what is uh, is next uh, is next for us definitely is to be uh, is to really not feel 
the cost of security. Today, the cost of security is that I have to have this pen drive. I have to connect it and I have to review everything on that screen here and click it to, to review the information because this, this piece here is the only thing I can trust. I cannot trust anything else in the world. This is this is tough, right? I mean, this is this is really tough reality, uh, and it's a mm. technology reality, right? So uh, we are. The, the the next goal is to try to change that, to trust something else. And and so some you know some of these, um, like I, I've noticed that Ledger has um, been pursuing more, I guess, retail focused kind of marketing efforts. Yeah, curious to know, like the you know the thinking behind some of these efforts, uh, what you guys are planning, um, and also like what's the reception been like so far as you've sort of tried to make that um segue into into the mainstream I, i'm not entirely sure i understand the question but uh, I'll, I'll try to give an answer you'll tell me if i'm, okay. I'm uh, too far <laughs> off um our goal is to reach uh, the next 100 millions or billion users uh we know as adrian was saying there is a technical constraint um it's difficult to interact with a hardware wallet uh, so there is one one work in progress try to facilitate and make it easier. That's one thing. At the same time, we cannot wait. Okay, the hardware manufacturing timeline and the hardware evolution is definitely not aligned with the crypto industry speed and, and fast-paced environment. Mm -hmm. So crypto will evolve way faster than, than hardware wallet or, or phones. That's at least what I'm convinced of today. Um, so at the same time, we still need to try to onboard as many people as there is out there onto the existing solution. Because if they are not using Ledger Hardware Wallet, first of all, they are not self-custodying and they are at risk. So the second, I would say, um, strategical or yeah, strategic uh, action is to try to expand our reach through as many partners as possible. So for instance, maybe you saw recently, we, we made a, a partnership with Coinbase uh, extension. Mm. Um, th the goal here is really to, to offer people all the gateways possible they want to the crypto ecosystem while still using the security of the hardware wallet. Mm. Because if it's just Ledger, uh, and if it's just us, uh, uh, Frenchy guys uh, on the side, it's right. It's not us, okay? What we need to, to do is really to build this connectivity uh, and this connected environment to all the crypto services out there. Mm. So you can see on already many different websites, you can connect with your Nano. And if you cannot connect with your Ledger device, you can connect through MetaMask or there are always options but we, we want to extend that even more. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the technical angle. And on the marketing angle, there is the question about how do you make it known that people can actually do this um, mm -hmm. for crypto degenerates and for people that are really heavily doing stuff in crypto, it's it's obvious, okay? But for the next, you know, for the newcomers, it's not, it's not at all. Uh, we receive tons of questions um, that may look very, you know, basic or silly to you uh, because you've been there a long time. But for many people, crypto is, Still very difficult to apprehend and they have to go through this journey of learning and, every, and everything so on top of this marketing effort to just tell people you can use ledger everywhere there is also mm -hmm. this educational effort of this is what you can do with crypto this is what you know keys private keys public keys blockchains this is all right all these concepts what do they mean so we have this entire ac academy sections um a lot of people in the in the industry are doing this and it's really a mm -hmm. uh, so far, we haven't found a, a better way to try to, to spread the word uh, r r around crypto because everyone needs to go through these steps. It's not easy enough today mm. to just abstract the complexity. Uh, at some point, maybe it will become easy enough so that people don't care how it works. It just works and they don't need to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, we still have this educational effort to, to make. Uh, and so uh, the final angle that we have is, is very very much ledger centric, but not entirely, that's where uh, Adrian comes in, is that we want to still onboard people through our software, through Ledger Live, uh, giving them you know, a, a great UX so that it's easy for them to basically onboard into crypto, buy their first crypto, maybe swap them if they want. And then there is a, a dedicated section in Ledger Live where we tell them, hey, by the way, there is this entire world of other services mm -hmm. and, and partners that you can reach out to. Uh, and, and right now uh, we have a, a limited offer, but we are extending it uh, every day. And the goal here is to 
is to tell our users, okay, you you have the security of the hardware wallet, you have the, the user experience of Ledger Live, mm. and if you go to, to all these services in Ledger Live, you still have both. You still have the security and the convenience. So you can rest assured that you're you're doing very techy and degenerate crypto stuff, mm. but you're doing it in a safe environment. So it, it's one way for us to also onboard new people uh, into this uh, in, into this uh, this this new world of services that are built that are built every day. I'm curious, you know, like it's great to see some of the efforts that you guys have made marketing wise. You know, like uh, I saw a ledger in a, a music video the other day, um, a, a nano wallet. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting because if you think about it, right? Like, um, I guess the challenge. I'm assuming the challenge for you guys is that. For a lot of new entrants, right, like um, people have a lot of basic um, fundamental questions about crypto. Like, for instance, um, you know, they might not understand between like, you know, I know like for me, you know, for a long time, people would say, well, I thought, you know, Bitcoin's meant to be secure, but, um, you know, Mt. Gox got hacked or like this exchange got hacked. And, and I'm like, well, yeah, you know, OK, the protocol's secure, but um you're a custodian is not necessarily secure and you know like i guess i imagine that the challenge for you guys is that if you're onboarding new people you need to first and foremost explain to them like why security matters and like you know i'd imagine that's got to be a pretty yeah but that's one way to view it the other way to view it is that unfortunately the the news if you follow the news in the cryptosphere every week there is something happening bad that security would have solved, right? So, acts, uh, issues with, you know, people forgetting that you shouldn't share your 24 words. I mean, you, you hear about this every week, right? There, there is not a single week in, in crypto when there is not something happening. So, there is also, it's two forces. You can be you know, nice and, and explain why security matters to people. And that's just the theory. And then there is real life and there is mm -hmm. security in practice that reminds you that, you know, we are not saying that just because we want to be nice and for you to buy our hardware wallet. You know, security, if you fail security, it comes at a huge cost. I mean, and, and, and people realize that. I mean, you you don't get to get hacked twice, right? You maybe once because you didn't learn or you didn't put the effort but mm. once it happens to you then you you you, you learn and, and and then you you do what it takes to to secure your funds right so unfortunately we still have we still are at this stage in the industry where um we have so much bad news in terms of security that actually this is this is marketing for us right because people still don't um take this enough seriously right there, there mm -hmm. are still occurrences of of protocols of of uh, software layers on top of protocols that do not take security seriously so as long as as long as the industry does not take that seriously enough uh, will be there and this is free mm -hmm. advertisement for us right because i mean this is the hard way to realize security matters right and and you can't you can't get your own bank without security you cannot you know uh leave away from central banking uh without security right this mm. does not exist people have to realize uh, the trust we are putting in institution today come at a cost and if you want to remove from that scheme uh well you better be you know taking security seriously right so this is, um, I think, uh, we we explain why we explain what are the twenty four words, how we derive seeds, why you shouldn't put them on any uh, uh, digital device, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But I mean, people sometimes they don't want to listen, or they think we are just saying that because you know this is what we say, and we keep repeating it, and, and it has been for right. years, and we and we will keep doing that, right? So people might say, you know good old ledgers and that but mm. but actually the news are there right you don't don't listen to us listen to you know all the acts happening and and understand that security and 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 the time the moment you will want to to learn more about security and how we do it so beautifully at ledger then we we will have all the material mm. already ready for you 
Yeah. So like, I mean, I, th I think in some ways, right, it's, it's such a paradigm shift, right? Historically, like, um, you know, for the last however many decades, not, not forever, but for the last, let's say five, six, seven plus decades, you know, people have custodied their, their assets in a bank and they, that's the safe thing to do. I guess my question is, do you guys see this as a paradigm shift that you're helping facilitate? It's a good question. The, the, the question in the end is people decided to rely on, on banks to, to custody their assets because it's easier. You don't have to, to worry about anything. Well, mm. there is a, wor a worry, a very important worry you can have uh, that you should have, but, but you don't, especially in our Western countries where it's honestly, it's safe. Okay. You have money in your banks. It's safe, at least for now. Um, so you don't have to care. And it's, I would say it's, it's, it's always the same when it's working and it, and when there is no problem, it's easier to rely on someone else to deal with it. Okay. Whether it is to, to buy your online groceries and get it delivered at home, it's easier than doing it, doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Every kind of service that, it, that is facilitating or making your life easier, honestly, you, the user will choose to, to use at the end. Um, the only reason or the only moment when you change this, this approach is when there is a problem. So you can think about, uh, you know, what happened in, in Greece or, or problems in, in Turkey or, or, or right now in Canada, like people are like, mm -hmm. Oops, okay, I understand there is maybe something wrong with this system. Uh, in France, most people, most people don't care to be very, mm -hmm. very honest. Most people don't care at all. And they don't mm -hmm. want to self custody their, their assets because it's dangerous. So now the question is when you enter into crypto, what is your journey to get there? So some people will understand because they read about all these free advertisement that Elena was mentioning and they realize, okay, there is a risk and I want to be, to be covered. Um, but if let's assume, uh, there is an insurance, uh, for instance, with Coinbase that guarantee that any amount you store uh, with them will always be redeemable, even in case of a hack. Then mm -hmm. the real question is, should you still be, you know, doing self custody? You're, you're kind of lowering the risk. And so now the question is, do you still trust this system? Right. Uh, it's, it's, I would say it's kind of a political question at, at, at some point. Okay. Uh, mm. Do you really want to be your own bank and, and get out of the system? Do you really trust this, this philosophical or political approach? Or do you just want, um, you know, some kind of comfort and, and, and ease of use and, and, and it's okay if you leave it there. And mm -hmm. I would say it really depends on people. Um, some people like Adrian you know, are, are, I think, uh, a little bit more politically inclined to go to the, uh, to the extreme. Uh, I want to self-custody everything and I want to, to, to move away from the traditional banking industry. That's actually mm -hmm. how he got hired. Okay. At Ledger, he told us, okay, I'm, I'm moving out of the banking system. <laughs> that was his punchline. So, He's gone uh, full DJ. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and in a way, I, I really understand uh, this approach and, and I like this, but mm. not everyone can do this. Um, some people don't have the self-confidence to to be their own bank. It's it's kind of risky and it's, uh, mm. I don't know if you can sleep well when you do this uh, all day long. Now, the question is, what can Ledger offer in this mm. in this change of, you know, paradigm change, as you, as you called it? Um, maybe we can provide security to, to these crypto banks. That's actually one thing we do on the B2B side, okay? We offer mm -hmm. hardware security for, for custodians. We are not the custodians, but we do offer a such a such technical solution. Um, but we're also working on, on other ideas so that people can still be self-custodying, like yeah. owning them their 24 words, right. but without the headache of, you know, being responsible for it. So, you know... A lot of people in, in the space are talking about social recovery and things like that. Mm -hmm. We're exploring options as well. Uh, it's all I can say for now. But um, but there is definitely, there is a, an addressable market here that is obvious mm. of people that still want to be self-custodying without having to worry about how this works and, and while being still confident they can trust themselves. Um, that's, that's actually something uh, I think really summarize it all. Right now, Self-custody means trust yourself. And right. it's, um, it, it's still maybe not exactly ready for mainstream. Uh, not all the people are ready to trust them themselves. Yeah, I mean, there are practical sort of, there are practical limits, right? You know, especially for people with sort of dynamic lifestyles 
you know, people who are sort of moving don't necessarily have one place of residence, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, and they have to sort of carry their hardware wallet with them everywhere they go and maybe think of somewhere to put their, you know, recovery phrase. Like there are lots of sort of challenges there. And I guess also another one that springs to mind is like, is le legacy, you know, what happens if you die and you want to pass that on? Um, I mean, is the, are these things that you guys are thinking about actively at Ledger? The legacy part, I'm not sure we, I, I don't know. I'm not sure we're, I'm not sure it's the first question we want to ask uh, or, mm -hmm. or we want to answer. But I remember I, I got the same question about legacy and how can I give my, my grandson Bitcoin? Uh, and and how, I received the question, what's the tax implication on that? Which, what can I know? I mean, <laughs> well, I, I, don't I have think no idea how this works. It's uh no one knows. No one knows, and 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 it's way too early, I think, to be talking mm. about this in a in serious way. But obviously, the more we we, the more time goes, the the, the more important these questions mm. will become, uh, for sure. But right. right now, I think the the onboarding stage, and just getting into crypto is probably the most um, challenging question and the most uh, urgent question to to answer. But you're right. The legacy is a, is, a, is another one, and maybe mm. just to add some colors to what you were saying. Um, one reason also people. Are really not comfortable with the idea of, of self custodying or, or or you know keeping their their twenty four words safe. The entire digital industry uh, brought us to the to the to actually the opposite uh, conclusion. Forgot your password. That's the magic trick that we have everywhere. Mm. So I'm actually not remembering any password. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I just I just right. forgot all the time. And and this is something that. Sorry to, to be blunt, but made us super dumb. It's like the the phone numbers in your in your mobile phone. You don't remember any of them because they're just all there. And when you lose your phone, right. you're, yeah, you're you're screwed. Uh, and and so it's it's crypto is kind of a back to the basic uh, mm. thing where you need to store your twenty four words. You don't need to store much, but this is uh, this is something important. And people are not used to this in in our digital world today. They they are used to. They, they want uh, something easy and they want to be able to 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 forget mm -hmm. uh, and then be helped. Uh, so at the end of the day, I, I'm I'm still not entirely sure what will win, uh, whether mm -hmm. it is the, the hardcore maxis that want people to be responsible or if it's a, a new system where people can still forget their password, but with a kind of um, of of uh, technical solution where there is no central point of failure mm. um, because that's the risk uh, i see today and so you know going back to some of the recent like sort of geopolitical events that have been happening you know the the thing in canada and and, and so forth like um have you guys actually been seeing a sort of noticeable uptick in interest in your product uh, i'm not entirely sure there is a, a noticeable change um mm -hmm. i think there is one uh, i saw that the other day in, a, in an internal chat um i think it's kraken ceo that says exactly this like um, if canada is asking us to freeze your funds we'll, mm -hmm. we'll have no way of saying no to that we'll have to comply if mm -hmm. you want to be safe on the safe side of things just yeah remove your funds from from the exchange and and, mm. and send them to a hubble wallet or do self custody i don't remember the exact wording but send them to a, right. to a ledger hubble wallet would be the perfect answer uh and and uh after this uh actual line uh, i think uh, brian armstrong said something in you know kind of similar um we noticed an increase in hardware sale uh, mm -hmm. is it a coincidence uh i don't know but it's something that we saw um so people are realizing, um, but it's not, you know, it, it's not plus 300%. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah. We, we can see, a, a, a let's say, a small amount of people buying more, but but it's not really, uh, the world is not realizing the problem uh, just because of that. It's, uh, it's just helping. Mm -hmm. it's, it's baby steps, okay? Uh, I think it's a one by one. Each people must go through this journey, understand. And once they do, usually they also become kind of, um, how do you say this? Uh, they also try to convince their friends, their family, and, and it's something you, you talk about at, at Thanksgiving. And you try to, when you're really deep into crypto, usually you're you're the you're the guy in the room that tried to, to convert everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, <laughs> evangelist. Exactly, exactly. So I, I, one question, I, I guess this is 
probably more um, related to backing up and, and thinking more about the advanced users. But like, you know, recently there's kind of been this big fiasco with the OpenSea kind of phishing attacks with, you know, replacing signatures and stuff like I guess my question is, how do you guys kind of respond to these sort of day-to-day events and how much do you factor them into like your design? And, you know, working in crypto for a few years, like everything is just iterative, right? Like you're always saying, oh, shit, we didn't think of that. And I mean, that's just part of making progress. And like, how much do you guys factor these types of things into your design changes? There are, there are many things we, we're doing. Um, I'll let Adrian explain a bit more of the part around plugins and stuff like that. but. But we first we have to acknowledge that there is a limitation uh, mm. that there is something Ledger cannot do, uh, at least right now. Um, what we our security model relies on on the what you see is what you sign principle. So you check on your Hubble wallet screen what you're actually doing. Mm-hmm. You verify the information before applying your digital signature. Um, that's 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 the rule. That there are two rules. Don't share your twenty four words. And, and verify on your device screen. That's the mm-hmm. only thing that you need to remember to be safe, basically. Um, but right now, the, the and especially the Ethereum ecosystem, um, you have a ton of smart contracts that are getting more and more complex, that have interaction between each other, that are mm-hmm. relying on messages and not on online transactions uh, anymore. So it's, it's really, like you said, it's an iterating process. Uh, even though people are still learning, well, we discover new ways of working. And so we... We break it again and again and again. But what's important to realize is that Ledger is not auditing any smart contract. We mm. can't. This is something on the blockchain. If there is a if there is a, a loophole in a smart contract, um, you can check on your screen what you're doing. If you're sending funds to a to a DAO contract, and mm. this contract is buggy, well, your your send operation mm. is safe. But then the funds stuck in the smart contract may not be. And, and there, there is nothing Ledger can do about this. So our security model stops at the moment you right. sign the transaction. And then it's, it's happening on the blockchain. It's not on us anymore. It's really on the on the people writing the code of the smart contract and making sure their their system is safe. So but I guess we, I guess then my next my next question would be if the you know if the ambition is to make uh, the product more user friendly uh, like ultimately there will be concessions that you guys have to make in your product design right and and you you know like i don't think that the future of realistically the future of um users you know retail users will not be like eyeballing a you know alphanumeric phrase to check each character right yeah you're perfectly right and w- one thing our security model is what it is today we're trying to improve this maybe by adding additional information in the software. Like, mm-hmm. okay, we know this address you're interacting with is something that you've interacted with in the past and you're not mm-hmm. getting somehow, uh, you know, fished or there is not a right. in the middle. Uh, but still, in the end, it's still on the Hubble wallet um, mm-hmm. screen that what you actually do with your private keys will be displayed. So you can, you can show anything on a screen. At the end of the day, what you sign on your device is what matters. So mm-hmm. I understand and I agree with you. We cannot ask people to review gibberish on their hardware wallets. And that's that's something that is not making any sense. And people actually do not check this. If you show them like a, a huge string of character, they will just skip it. That's the natural yeah, yeah. reaction. Check the, last, check the last four numbers. <laughs> and that's it. And, and and that doesn't mean anything. Okay, checking che- checking a hash for mm. a normal normal human being doesn't doesn't bring any, any additional security. Mm. So th- that's where I leave the floor to, to Adrien because Adrien is leading the initiative around how can we actually make it easier. Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, the, the there is no uh, compromise to be made on, on security, just to be clear. The, what, you know, the, the solution will come from adding layers on top of what's already existing, not, not any... Uh, not any compromission of of the security, right? Because mm-hmm. this is this is a no go, right? You can't you can't. F- the argument of user friendliness is not it, it will never be good enough to decrease the security uh, of of any device, right? So what you can do instead is just adding layers of information and trying mm-hmm. to enrich the experience so that the user will be faced with. A lot more information before signing or after signing, but just to make it clearer or 
uh, more aware of what he's about to do. And definitely there are tools already out there, right? MetaMask has, uh, has done this data tab where you can, you know, uh, leveraging other tools in the ecosystem. I mean, the ecosystem is uh, taking these uh, seriously, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of tools, a lot of whitelist, blacklist, all these are, are being built. Our challenge is how do we leverage all this information, all the people reviewing smart contract, I mean, ether scans, I mean, they are doing great jobs in, in trying to put always more information uh, in front of the users, right? You go to mm -hmm. Etoscan now, you have shitload of information about stuff and it wasn't that case years ago. And and the industry mm -hmm. is building all this, right? So our, our role now is how do we grasp everything that everybody is doing on, on, on getting clearer, better, more secure information so that we display it and we put it in front of the users before they sign. And now, yeah, if they sign hashes, it's not going to help a lot. And this is why the goal is also to, as much as we can, and by also uh, leveraging tools that are built by uh, other people in, in the industry, how do we try to make signing always clear, right? Mm. Always clear. How do we do uh, um, clear signing without um having to go through the current uh, heavy process of writing plugins whitelisting address etc mm -hmm. etc but i mean this is definitely uh, this is definitely uh, this is our roadmap uh, uh, it's just that it takes a lot of time because the the technical challenges here are are are, are huge mm -hmm. and um but yeah this is what we are working on trying to both higher on the stack and and in front of 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 users not on the nano but on any device on any uh, mm. uh, smartphone of laptop display more information right. and on the nano getting clearer information so that with both of these uh, you get a, a, a feeling and more than a feeling you you know what you are about to do and and mm -hmm. you know that you are going to do it securely but this will take this will take time to to get there but definitely and, we don't have a choice but to work towards that and and just to because Adrien is perfectly right and to to try to understand the, the complexity around this mm. on ethereum right now every day you have new smart contracts anyone can 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 write one copy one just you know tweak it a little bit and redeploy it um so if you if you see it from a mathematical standpoint, you have an infinity of combination possible for each smart contract. There is no way we will we will whitelist them all. Uh, there is mm -hmm. no way we can check them all. So the question is, how can we find, I would say, common ground, common rules, common stuff that we can decide are safe or not safe? Honestly, there is no real good question uh, on this at the moment because there are no standards in the industry. There is not mm -hmm. a, a definitely good uh, practice that is shared by all the all the legit actors, uh, it's its very difficult to find. Um, I mean, the, the community needs to find some kind of standards. Uh, mm. There are great initiatives out there. Um, I, I'm not sure about the, the, the name, so maybe Adriana can correct me, but there is, you know, this uh, this company called Sourceify, I think, uh, where basically they they take all the codes from all the smart contracts and they put it in, in some kind of a, a, of a decentralized database and and mm -hmm. we when when a code is like legit or at least reviewed by peers they they, they have a tick on it a kind of community based mm -hmm. approach to review smart contracts that's that's some kind of great initiatives um, and very quickly these guys realize okay but we need a way in the code of the smart contract to to somehow explain what stuff are doing you know give some mm -hmm. humanly understandable description of each function because right, right. You know, calling, calling a function safe transfer from well okay that's cool but but my sister will not get it uh, mm -hmm. we need to have a, a humanly understandable description mm -hmm. and then maybe ledger could rely on this on these kind of partners um, but at the moment we have no no easy way of doing this at the moment we need to rely on the bytecode on everything mm -hmm. that is deployed out there and to make sure that it's parsed correctly on the device so I think Unfortunately, I think we'll still have a few more months or years of, yeah. you know, uh, bad contracts, uh, hacks, and stuff like that that will happen. Uh, what, what you what you recently mentioned uh, about OpenSea, uh, it, I mean, it's not, 
it's not a mistake they did on purpose. Okay, they, mm-hmm. they were learning, uh, and and now they evolve and they try to change their contract so that the same problem doesn't ha- doesn't happen twice. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Maybe maybe another problem will happen, and and that's the way it is. It's always this game of uh, you know cat and mouse. Uh, hacker will find ways to, mm-hmm. to hack contracts, and and then people will upgrade their contracts. So the only thing we can do is inform, and when we know something is is uh, is already quite well established. Let's try to show it in a clear way on the device so that really people can be safe from uh, uh, when they sign their operation. I, I also want to say I think it's great what you guys are doing with Ledger Live and kind of onboarding more sort of trusted dApps into Ledger Live. Obviously, like ourselves, I think that's a that reduces an element of risk. I think in terms of thinking about you know new users going onto a website, mistyping the URL, and then, you know, kind of interacting through a web browser wallet versus straight from the Ledger Live environment. I think it's it's a leading initiative. And so, yeah, I mean, it definitely, I definitely think it's great that you guys are working to onboard more uh, retail users. It's, it's a massively important uh, mission. You know, I, I think to some degree, we're trying to do it as well. But um, not probably not on the scale that you are. Given we are a pretty DeFi, DGen centric kind of platform at, for now. <laughs> but but everybody needs to do it, right? It's not about you doing it or us doing it. It's mm-hmm. everybody needs to do it, right? The, it's it's right. it's a matter of the whole ecosystem. Whether you are in DeFi, NFT, whatever you are working on, if if you are at 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 an edge, if you are uh, dealing with something that's uh, every month, you feel like you've lived through years of of innovation. You, <laughs> you, there is no choice but to 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 put this effort into education, explaining people what mm. you are doing, why you are doing it, and repeating it because you will have newcomers all the time, right? So this right. is uh, this is why we do it. This is why you do it, and this is why a lot of people are doing it. And there is no mm. choice. You you don't get to uh, you, you don't get to to go into DeFi and understand everything uh, in in a few weeks, that's that's not going to happen. The change is too huge. The revolution mm. is is huge. Um, you know, time needs to be uh, effort uh, is 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 necessary, right? I mean, you can be reading about Bitcoins for years and still discover stuff. I mean, this is uh, this is what beautiful about this space. So, the, there is no choice but to keep doing it, and and this is really. Um, it's a matter of, of survival for the industry. Eh? If mm-hmm. if we keep, if we stop uh, explaining why we are doing things and how we do things, I mean, we're just going to be a group of uh, a few people uh, uh, in 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 our own bubble, right? Mm-hmm. This is I, I don't think this is the this is not why we are here, right? Uh, no. the, the change are too big and uh, the. Um, uh, definitely, the code uh, we are putting out there is is for everyone, right? I mean, our values is our decentralization uh, and uh, and and uh, you know resist uh, censorship, right? Yeah, just uh, just wanted to add something because you mentioned you know uh, what, what what we're working on together uh, with StakeDAO being uh, adapt listed uh, uh, soon in in the July. Um, I'm not sure all, all your all the people listening to to, to the podcast are, are aware about this, but really the initiative of listing services, whether they're dApps or non-dApps in the July, it's indeed for that. I mean, you you mentioned the the URL trick or people you know reaching a bad website and getting fished. Um, Ledger Live is is solving this in a sense because you don't have to type any URL. You 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 reach out to you get to the service right away. But more than that, we are really forcing uh, our partners in, in this in this new section we call discover all these dapps that are listed there we enforce clear signing so we make sure that whatever you sign on your device is something that you can actually understand uh, and that has many implications but one of the uh, of the of the most important one is that you will know that you're interacting with the stake DAO contract mm. and not another one you're not right. somehow doing something that we're not supposed to happen or if you are you will see that Ledger Live is telling you warning, warning. There is something not mm-hmm. not good happening. We don't know what, but don't sign anything. You have a really a warning message on your nano screen, and it tells you warning. You're blind signing. So, the, for us, the rule of no blind signing in Ledger Live is a, is a way to protect users um, and 
And hopefully it will help um, people feel more secure uh, when interacting with all these new, uh, very innovative, uh, you know, dApps. So uh, you guys will continue to explain what, what Stake DAO is and how this works and what are the risks, etc. On our side, we, we will maybe not explain a lot about what Stake DAO is, but we will mm-hmm. continue explaining about the risk and what you should verify on your screen and working together, hopefully <laughs> we'll reach the stage where people will feel safer when interacting uh, with, with your service. That's really right. the, the ambition of, the, of this section. Amazing. Yeah, definitely looking forward to kind of, you know, work together on the, the education component. It's, yeah, it's a massive part of it. I mean, it's something we've been, we've been trying to work on as well. Um, you know, I think, I think we've covered kind of a lot of ground today. And I'd, 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 I'd like to thank both of you guys for making the time to come on. Definitely looking forward to kind of seeing what Ledger has planned and in store, you know, this year, next year. Personally, I'm a user, massive fan of of the tech. So, yeah, yeah, keep keep it up, guys. Thanks again for coming on today. Yeah, thank you, thank you. for uh, for having us.